Okay, this is the East Coast update um, for January the 3rd, uh, 2009. I just want to let you know if you want to have a quiet weekend, don't let, uh, don't have the uh, Financial Times delivered to your door. This stuff got me so worked up that I waited and prayed for sundown to have this, to make this video. I just want to go over a few items, but I want you to listen to what's going on. It's nice to hear from uh, Europe what uh, we're going to do to ourselves and how many times the knife is going to be twisted into our backs. Uh, this is from a, this is on page three of the weekend edition of the uh, Financial Times uh, by a Chris, uh, Krishna Guha, G-U-H-A. Uh, the topic is U.S. Treasury sets out rescue framework. This is what the United States Treasury and probably the Federal Reserve is going to do uh, with your money and my money and the subsequent bailouts that are going to happen. I want to quote two sections of this paragraph and it's describing how um, the, the US Treasury, a monetary agency, is going to evaluate uh, possible uh, uh, institutions for bailout. And I'm going to quote, it would evaluate, and they're referring to the U.S. Treasury, it would evaluate the extent to which the institution was, quote, at risk of a loss of confidence and, quote, degree to which that stress is caused by a distress or illiquid portfolio of assets. And it goes on to the next paragraph, which I find interesting, and goes, and I quote, the Treasury would, access, would, would assess whether the institution is sufficiently important to the nation's financial and economic system, close quote, that a, that a loss of confidence would potentially cause major disruptions to credit markets or payments and settlement systems, destabilizing uh, asset prices, significantly increase uncertainty, uh, and, or lead to similar loss of confidence and financial market stability. Now, I don't know about you, but um, I have an accountant. And my accountant does not do my books based on emotion or fear. He does it by profit and loss. Now, when I go to buy a business, I don't go and say, ooh, it's very pretty. What I do is I look and see how much uh, how little debt a, a particular business has versus its growth potential versus its income and cash reserves. In other words, I choose it not on an emotion, but on a pattern, a system, a, a mathematical calculation, not an emotional reaction. So this is what our government is doing. Every time it thinks that something is too big to fail, it's going to throw money at it, regardless of whether or not. It has any viability as a company or bank or whatever institution they're doing it. Now they're doing it with the uh, automakers and, and GMAC. They made GMAC a bank and even though based on the uh, ch chartering system they were too, uh, they had so much debt that they couldn't be a bank because they don't have any money. But yet it became a bank regardless. Remember about 30 days before they made it a bank they told it couldn't be a bank because it, it had too much debt and then it just turned around and just changed the rules because obviously math is not as important as emotional you know reaction I mean this is a critical situation here where we here you know if if I reacted every if I did this I would be out of money very quickly just emotionally going after something sometimes you have to look at a business and say you know I can't throw any more money at it or I won't buy it, or I won't, you know, support it because in the long run, it's not going to stand on its own, even if you threw all the money at the world in it. So that's one. A gentleman named uh, on page seven. A gentleman named John Athers, A U T H E R S. Um, he does a lot of commentaries. I've seen him on YouTube. Uh, he's got this very cool mustache. And he was talking about uh, his uh, commentary, basically, uh, was, if this is 1932, there will be hope as well as pain. And he basically said, you know, the possibility of bailouts will help the situation, da-da-da-da-da. You know the story. You know, let's blow sunshine up your butt and everything will be fine. What I want you guys to do, and this is what I've decided to do in the last, I'd say about the last 20 
days, I'd say. For the next six months, I want you guys to watch when you go on Bloomberg.com, and I'll put the hyperlink on the. Uh, I guess it would be over here. So uh, I'm going to put the uh, I'm going to put the hyperlink to Bloomberg News, and you always see the big Dow Jones. It's going to go up. There's going to be some type of dead cat bounce going on here, and uh, and there's a lot of revaluation and um, exuberance that you don't you know it's it's not real. Basically, I'm telling you. So what do we as individuals look at? I want you guys to look at the two-year note of the Treasury bonds and the 10-year note. At what point the two-year note was making less than 1%, uh, its lowest I think it was at 0.70, it's pretty close to zero. Even those three-month ones are in negative territory and people are buying it. But an interesting thing, the more people jump into a Treasury, the lower the number versus people getting out of Treasuries, the higher the number because they need to get people to buy um, treasuries because that's how we make money kids that's how your dollar bill is worth something by everybody buying our debt so an interesting thing it had been dropping and it had been dropping precipitously with the 10-year note the 10-year notes around 2.37 percent most people don't want to put their money long term for a decade but they do not mind sticking it in a three month and a two year because they rather get something than nothing or even in this case negative because they know that their money will be worth more during a deflationary situation. I predict that the two-year treasury is going to probably bottom out at 0.67% by, I'd say, just around the inauguration of uh, Barack Obama. And I think the 10-year is going to hit around 1.885 maybe. And then what you're going to see, that's going to be the end of the deflationary period that we're having right now. And you're going to see those two numbers start to shoot up. When the two-year gets above 2%, and it will, we're going to be in really bad shape. Because what's going to happen is the Chinese, who are also looking at a major uh, shrinking GDP um, of close to probably 2%, Singapore, is obviously, uh, Singapore has been threatening that they're going to have a 2% negative GDP. These people are not going to buy our debt. They're going to start taking their own money and using it for their stimulus packages because actually their money is backed up by certain things like gold and production and making stuff. We don't have that. What's going to happen is probably around February, March, that's what's going to happen. So don't watch what's happening up in the Dow, S&P, and what have you. Watch down there, all the way near the bottom on the left hand, on the far right hand corner there, that little column just below the Dow Jones. And then you watch that two year and 10 year bond. When she bottoms out, she's gonna to start to spike. And that is really, and it's gonna probably co you know, collate with, with the fact that we're going to, you know, there, you know, Barack Obama said that we would probably be in a 10% unemployment by the end of 2009. I think we're gonna be at 10% by March, maybe even February. Um, I think that will pretty much put a bite in it. Two reasons. One, uh, people have already stopped buying stuff. Uh, this New York, uh, I can speak for myself only here in the uh, lovely New York City, uh, it was dead the day of uh, New Year's Day and it's now the third and I could probably uh, dance a cha-cha in the front of a major avenue in which I live on where there are buses, cars, and whatever, and would not be probably run over and could probably do that cha-cha for about five, 10 minutes. That's not good because we get as much traffic as a highway in front of my building. So a lot of people are staying home. A lot of people are cooking at home. I've noticed that in my, I'm, I'm in a fairly large apartment building and um, things are starting to change. Don't forget, um, anybody who hadn't been laid off between uh, Thanksgiving and New Year's will be laid off historically the first Monday in January that's the day after tomorrow so let's see what happens I think that also uh, we're going to see a big revision upwards in the amount of people unemployment uh, amount of people unemployed I think that they've been holding back the numbers for as long as they can and I think that Mr. Paulson has been and Bernanke has been holding this stuff down long enough for them to hit the uh, exits also don't forget something else which I think is critical Henry Paulson, as part of this whole uh, bailout package, made sure that he was immune from prosecution. I predict that uh, we're going to find out where that $2 trillion that they won't tell Bloomberg uh, news about was to jack up the, uh, the Dow up 500 points 
uh, back in uh, middle November. So, till next time, peace.